Having a decent set of window coverings on your camper van is absolutely vital for a bit of privacy and for stopping the light coming in on those early mornings when out camping. I'm Lee, this is Coombe Valley Campers and today we're going to be showing you how to put up curtains in your camper van. <laughs> When it comes to fitting curtains into your camp conversion, there are a ton of different options. Today, we are concentrating on this Volkswagen T4 long wheelbase that we have converted, or we're halfway through converting in our workshop. This one's a little bit special. Everything is custom from the bed, the electrics, the interior, the interior units, everything is fully custom, but we wanted a really good curtain set. And for that, we turn to Heritage Parts Center, and today we're gonna show you how to fit them from start to finish. The tools you're going to need to fit curtains into your camper van are as follows. A drill with a 2 and 3 mil drill bit, maybe even double up on your 2 mil drill bits because they're very easy to uh, break. A file for modifying bits of plastic trim if you need to. A form of marking, we have found a pencil and a pen to be useful in this situation. Uh, small Phillips screwdriver that is going to fit the screws that are provided with the kit and some tape for either mark for either masking off sensitive areas or as an aid to marking holes and finally some trim tools to help you prise off or remove plastic trim in your camper what we're going to do now then is unbox the curtains right before your very eyes now as we said before these are from heritage parts center now, you wouldn't normally go to Heritage Parts Centre for this sort of thing, but their line of products for T5s, T4s, T6s and T3s, or Type 25s as they're listed on their site, is getting more and more each month, which is why we're working with them more and more, because they're catering for the camper vans more than they ever have done. Now, the difference with these curtains, or this kit, is that the rails are shaped to fit which means you don't have to do any tweaking you don't have to do any bending oh i've got sent a treat as well who wants that ping me a comment down below and um what should we say funniest comment gets me a freshener and a sticker and a key ring from us so if you want the want the goodies leave a comment down below with a funny comment Ugh. Oh, that's just a bill. You don't want to see that. Right, so in this curtain kit, we have here a VW a T4 long wheelbase, a tailgate, five windows, blackout curtain. We will leave a link to these below. Um, and like I said before, like I was saying, they are shaped to fit. Now you can, I fitted a lot of curtains on a lot of vans and there are some very reputable kits out there that despite having to put your van and the spec of your van and the window size shape and extra and everything else, when you get the curtain kit, you just get pre-cut lengths of curtain rail. And then you have to bend them and fit them and cut them and trim them and everything else. That's not what you're paying for. So with these curtains, You get shaped rails and they're all labelled look as well. So if we're calling, I haven't got a pointer, there you go, there's a pointer. Um, this is going to be the back, this is the front of the vehicle, this is going to be the rear offside window, B for bottom. So everything's here, everything's labelled. Now if I remember rightly, the curtains themselves are 180 denier which is which means that they are almost blackout they don't claim to be completely blackout um but they do claim to be 180 denier which is factually correct we have the curtain tie backs and the curtain kits all rolled up beautifully in there now if you're thinking they look mighty short that's not going to fit my window 
you'd be right. But they are stretchy. So if I go over here, yes, that is mighty small. But once you've got your rails in there, they stretch really, really nicely onto the rails. Um, you have your screw kits all your nuts, bolts and washers and everything else. I say nuts, bolts and washers. You have a kit with all your end caps, your screws and your poppers. So you can screw your bits and pieces down and then attach things like your tie backs with the screws. So you can see that it's a super nice kit. And again, you wouldn't normally go to Heritage for this sort of thing. Um, but like I say, we're working with them more and more because their range is increasing work. Their range is increasing more and more, and we really like working with them as well. So, how about then we go and put these into one of the windows in a fully detailed manner, and then um, we will show you all of them complete. So, it's going to be a nice in depth video on how to fit all of these curtains. We'll do one to the long side over there in detail, we'll do one to the sliding door in detail, and then we'll show you the rest in a bit of a montage. What do you reckon? Let's go. Been a bit of a nerd here, and I've laid everything out, because it's satisfying for me and it may be satisfying for you, but what we've laid out is all of the gear that you receive in the box from Heritage Parts Centre. We have the rails for the long side sliding door, the two rearmost windows, and then the tower gate. We don't have a tower gate on this one, but I just wanted to lay all the kit out for you. What you receive per curtain rail set is two of the curtains themselves, two black curtain holdbacks, 16 Phillips tapered screws, four of the end caps, and four poppers. So 16 of the screws, um, so you get six per rail, four for the poppers, um, the six per rail includes those end caps and then you've got the two tie backs as well so everything now is laid out here and they're even kind enough to give you some extra spares as well which we've just figured out they the little gray bits in there they're actually spare hoops so if you go ahead and lose any of the hoops out of your fabric you get some spare as well and that's about it what we'll do now is move ourselves into the van we are going to go with the long side first so i'm going to grab these everything from this pile, take it to the van and I'll show you exactly how to fit them. Once you're in the van and you've got your gear in here and you've chosen which window you're fitting your curtains to first, it's just to have a look at the bottom and see which one um, is right for the top or bottom. So here we've got long side, bottom rail, long side, top rail. And if I just place that up against there, you can already see how that fits in beautifully with the contours of the van. And then once you've got your end caps in there too, you see how nice that looks when it's sat in. And in this particular case, we've got the gray and gray and black, and it all just kind of blends in really nicely. So first things first, I want to hold this in place. And well, there's two versions you can do here you can put some masking tape underneath where all of the pre-drilled holes are like this okay and then you can take something like a, a pencil or a sharpie or a biro anything that's going to fill fit in that hole there mark your hole and then drill that hole now in this instance we are using a two millimeter drill bit because that will help our threaded screw go into that hole and still give it plenty of bite i'm using a two millimeter on a single skin um, of metal if it was a double skin piece of metal which you will find in and around the car i would recommend moving up to a three millimeter drill bit um, because these screws and the implement you're screwing it in with will not be strong enough to bite into two layers of that metal. So, we've made our hole. And it's as simple as that. Now, you will notice in my little pile of stuff, I have just a small blade here. 
and that is literally just to take off that carpet because when you are drilling into carpet you will gather loads of that material on there when you're trying to drill in. Oh, find a hole now. Cut. <laughs> okay, and back in the room I found the hole. Let's not panic. Um, so, we've got the hole there. Obviously you can mark directly onto the carpet if you like, but for our purposes we've used the tape, marked it, drilled the hole, popped the screw in. Now, let's see if we can do this. Okay, what the hell's gone on there, Al? I've put the wrong one on. There you go. This is the right one. There you go. So. Put that in there. Find the hole. Now I'm gonna screw that in just temporarily. I'm not gonna put it all the way home just yet. Look at that, that two mil allows that screw to go right in there and it's not fighting me or anything. It's got the bite and I'm able to screw it in with just one hand. So, now that's in place, I'm happy with its position. I can now go ahead and drill all of those holes in situ. When it comes to drilling the holes in the end, there's not pre-drilled holes there. So you have to drill, and I'll do this one first. Clear some of that from the end of the drill bit. Move any obstructions out of the way. I'm gonna drill directly into that hole there. So that's through the first layer of this aluminum rail. Now I'm gonna keep going through and it will then go through the skin of metal. There you go. Get my screw. straight in there you go I'm now going to repeat that one two three four more times and we'll call that bottom rail in and then we'll move up to the top is that we have one two three four five six screws that you have to drill holes for um, super easy as long as you've got a nice fresh two mil drill bit and the right drill when it comes to the top the process is virtually the same apart from the fact that you've got to do it kind of one-handed but you can have somebody hold the hold the rail up for you so there's my bit of tape, grab my pencil, get it in the right position, mark that tape there. Now I'm going to make that a little bit more prominent on the carpet underneath with the black sharpie because as you saw the first time I kind of lost the hole. Straighten there with the two mil drill bit. Will it keep the black mark? Yes. Grab my screw. You notice I'm not using a power screwdriver for this. And that is because we're only dealing with one two mil hole. We're only dealing with a single skin of metal. And if I was to round off the top of that screw because I've gone in too fast with a power screwdriver, electric screwdriver, then I kind of wrecked it. I know I've got some spares, but for the sake of a little bit of elbow grease, 
just popping it in with one single screwdriver it's fine you've just got that added bit of control as well so again let's go and do the rest of them and then i'll bring you back when it comes to sliding in the curtain rail sorry sliding in the curtain i'll bring you back then <laughs> right on the bit as well. Why did I hit the lens? <laughs> oh. Word to the wise before you screw all of these home, just pop your little end caps in first because they're a pain to get in after. I don't know why I didn't do it. Come on. There you go. Now we've got it all in place and we're happy with our fit. We're actually gonna take these screws out again. Probably one, two, probably the two screws nearest to one end and that'll allow us to feed the curtain all the way through. Now when it, let me do that and then I'll come back to telling you how to feed the curtains in because you've got to get it the right way. There's a couple of ways you can do this, but the way I've found most effective is to put one rail in first and then the other rail in after. Mainly because if you were to put just a couple in and then start on the bottom rail, the moment you put any tension on, they'll all slide out the rail. So what we're going to do is pop in all of the rails in, oh, all of the curtain runners in at the top. We're going to put one, two screws back in with the end cap and then we'll concentrate on the bottom and pull them all down to the bottom. Good. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 rails at the uh, runners at the top. And then we shall put those two screws back in, making sure to put the end cap in first. Now, they're not going to fall off, which is handy, but the material's got enough give in it to be able to put your slides in. Without the top rail pinging out. And it's as simple as that. Now the curtains are all in, top and bottom. They fit nicely to the sides of the van. And uh, black out as well. The next stage is putting in our two poppers. And then I'll pop the other curtain in, do the same the other side, and that'll be it for this window. 
The key to getting the right position for your popper is mocking it up, basically. We have this rubber edge trim and this uh, wall of the window aperture here. Um, if we get it too close to the rubber trim, we're not actually going to be able to popper it in. Um, but we also don't want the curtain edge to be too far away so as we're letting light through. So I am going to almost stretch those two apart, find the position that I'm happiest with, then I'm going to almost hover my Sharpie where I want my dot to be, which is where I'm going to screw the hole, and I'm going to quickly move that out of the way and just put that dot there. Then I can put my cap just over that, just double check the position that I'm happy with, slide that curtain rail back, uh, see there's two layers, there's two layers of metal, let's see if this will work, it may not do, so we've put two mil in into two layers of metal, and in this case that's worked very well. So I'm happy with that. Let's pull that screw out, put the popper in. Super. Top one, so I'm gonna pop that one in, in there. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna stretch this middle section as much as I can. I'm going to hover my pen over where I want the hole to be, so it's uniform. Good, I'm very happy with that there. and pop that in. The last piece for me to cover today on the curtains is the curtain tie back. Now it doesn't really matter where you put this. It's down to your style really. And when I say where you put it, I mean the height at which you put it into relation to the window. So what I would recommend you do is put your tassel round Bearing in mind that point, what I'm going to do is just turn that round because the loose tassel will be pointing that way. So let me put that band round there like that. And it's just about the consistency, the uniformity of it really. Um, so when I say it doesn't matter where you position them, they can be all the way down. They can be in the middle. Or all the way at the top, if you so wish. Excuse the compressor. In this case, I'm going to be putting the tie back around the middle, just there. I will mark my hole here. done that wrong again. No, nope. that's good.
there we have it a super nice kit that really nice um, it's neat it's tidy the carpet at uh, carpet the curtains are smart when they're put away and pretty effective when they're drawn as well I guess you can even tuck that away for a bit of a cleaner look um, what I'm gonna do then I'm gonna put the other curtain on put the poppers in put the tie back in show you the finished result and then we'll go and do all the others but I think we'll probably do a bit of a time lapse for all of that save you watching me do every single curtain what do you think let's go I wanted to show you about the sliding door real quick before we proceed um, once again the rails are labelled top and bottom and I've just mocked up that bottom rail and you can see that that pin there is in the way of pushing this rail all the way to the back which isn't a problem but you've got some choices to make you can either leave the base plate now the pins not a problem the pins not gonna affect affect this fitting at all it's the plate around the bottom the trim now for me fitting this rail up against that base plate as it is is not quite how I want to have it finished it fits beautifully on both this curvature and this one here you can see it fits really really nicely and touches just touches that uh, handle trim and runs all the way really nice and flush all the way across the front and over to here however what I'm gonna do before I drill any holes is remove that piece of plastic and I'm just gonna shave a little bit of that black plastic off so it allows this uh, rail just to slide back further and it's not going to affect the operation of the door pin it's not going to affect the operation of the rail there it is so you can see which way this fits in by way of this curve here it will fit in there so that's the way it goes in And what I'm going to do is just shave a little bit of this off. I'm just going to use a bench grinder, nothing fancy. You could use a file or anything else. And it has what looks to be a little bit of overspray on there as well. Yeah, that's going to come off. So I'm just going to trim a little bit of that off, clean this up so it's nice and black again, and then I'll pop it back in. And that will then allow us to put the rail Just that little bit higher up into that window recess and in my opinion that will look just that little bit better so i'll go away and do that now and i'll bring you back after i've done it one of the options is using a bench grinder but it's it's, it's a little bit aggressive so what i'm going to do is just i've popped that bracket into the vise and i'm literally just going to shave it down and then i can take it to the door and keep retesting it but in reality I just kind of want it flush with those clips there That'd be too aggressive.
And there we have it, a completely transformed van then with the new curtain kit from Heritage Park Centre. Super chuffed with these. Uh, they're a great kit, fully comprehensive, got every screw, popper, bracket, everything you need to do the complete kit. There was nothing missing and uh, it goes in very easy. When you've got four curtains and 16 screws per uh, window frame. It's a lot of drilling. It's a lot of screwing. It's a lot of you know making sure they fit right. But it's totally worth it, um, and I'm pretty happy with the results. And I hope you are too. If you want to purchase this set of uh, curtains for the T4 or the T5, T6, have a look down in the link below. You will see that we have left the links for the Heritage Park Centre site. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow our videos. And also, if you would like to become a patron and support our channel, please take a look in the links below and all the information will be there. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.